I cut and drilled this cheap piece of acrylic. It's all it takes to assemble these stock rails into a really nice router sled. Sounds simple, but it took me a few tries because I made a bunch of mistakes associated with cutting the acrylic the wrong size, spacing the blocks. I bought the wrong rails to start with. I even screwed up drilling the holes in the acrylic. I'll show you how I finally got it right and show you my mistakes along the way. Let's dive in. I'm using only a single piece of acrylic. It's 3 8 inches thick and 12 inches by 12 inches square. And I got it online for less than $20. Just doing a quick layout here to get the sizing, I want to make sure that the sled will work with any of the three routers that I currently own, and it'll probably work with just about any router. This acrylic is really easy to work with, just cutting it on the table saw like I would any piece of wood. I need three pieces, all that are 11 and a quarter inches in length, and the two outside rail mounts are two and a half inches wide, and the router tray is five and a half inches wide. Having the router tray this long rectangular shape is important and it's what I got wrong in the first attempt. I originally made the router tray square with the router just centered inside four equally spaced blocks in the corners. The main problem with this square design is that the router sits so far away from the side rails. In this example where I used my initial design on only an 18 inch wide workpiece I needed to space the rails 30 inches apart and I realized I'd quickly run out of available width on my sled for wider work pieces. Which is why I later determined that the square router tray was just a bad design and decided to redo it with a rectangular design instead and it allows the router to get as close to the side rails as possible. Okay, so now that I have this new piece of acrylic cut to a more optimum size, it's time to get the holes drilled. I'm using this template as a guide for each of the two hole patterns that I need to drill, I'm just attaching the template to the workpiece with double sided tape. I'm allowing the template to center the drill bit as it goes down, so I could just quickly move to the next hole, not clamping down the workpiece, and crank out all of the drilling pretty quickly. And it results in perfectly spaced holes. And what I'm showing here is what I did when I finally got it right, but it wasn't my first attempt. So here's my first attempt. Without using a template, I tried to make some marks on the acrylic and then use a center punch where those marks are. And then I used the wrong type of drill bit. It kept grabbing as it broke through. So I learned, don't use this pilot point style of drill bit to drill through acrylic. You need to use just a normal drill bit. Anyway, so here's the result of that first attempt. The block is crooked, the holes are torn out, and it's just an embarrassing first attempt. I cut this template from 3mm black acrylic using my laser. There are probably lots of other ways to make this template if you don't have a laser, but the laser just seemed the easiest way I could think of. And once I had the template, at first I guess I felt like a superhero and thought I could drill the holes by hand, but wasn't really successful at keeping it straight and then I had to apply the good old around the clock technique to straighten out the holes. So my advice is, use a template, use a drill press, and use the proper drill bit. So the last operation in the hole pattern for mounting the rails is a few of the holes need a countersink and I'm cutting that with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit. Here I'm just marking and drilling the holes to mount the router base. And just using a 2 and a half inch hole saw for the router bit through hole. Now the three acrylic plates are all finished, and again this is just from a single piece of acrylic that costs less than $20. Of course, I had to buy a couple of them because I screwed up the first one, but now that I know what to do, it should only take one piece. And basically, this is all you get when you buy one of those pre-made router sled kits for many hundreds of dollars. Before I go to assemble it, just a couple of quick notes on the size and the style of the rails to use. I've seen some router sleds that use this SBR style rail on both the side rails and the cross rails, but then the router mount gets really complicated with some type of an L bracket needed, which is not only more work to build, but it also add an opportunity for a not level router plate. By using this style of cross rails, then the router mount's just a simple single piece of acrylic and assured to get the router mount perfectly level at the rails in all directions. 
The other choice to make is the size of the rail. I chose to use a 20 millimeter diameter for the cross rail and a 16 millimeter diameter for the side rails. I first bought the 25 millimeter diameter for the side rails. You can see here side by side with the 16 millimeter. I decided the 25 millimeter was just too heavy and unnecessarily large. So I ultimately went with the 60 millimeter on the side rails, mainly because it's significantly easier to move around and it's significantly less expensive. I'll put a complete parts list of everything I used in the description. Okay, so now to assemble it all. First I'm starting with attaching the router tray. I start all of the screws and then I tighten them all together just making sure that the tray slides smoothly as I go. Then attach the end mounts to the acrylic edge pieces. So then I turn it over to attach the side rails and I just want to make a note here that I drilled two sets of holes to give me an option on the spacing of the blocks. I can mount the blocks close together to give me more length capacity to the sled or I can mount the blocks directly in line with the crossbars if I think the stability is needed. And I decide that this thing is rock solid either way and go with the option to mount the blocks closer together. Again, just making sure everything is sliding smoothly as I tighten all the screws down together. I'm trying to avoid taking my full size router out of the router table because that's a pain. So at first I use this Porter Cable compact router that I've had for about 20 years. It works pretty good, but it's a fixed speed 22,000 RPM, so I'm limited to really no bigger than a one inch surfacing bit. I use it successfully on this small project, but I really want to make use of a two inch bit and need to lower the router speed. So my next plan is to use my DeWalt trim router, which is a variable speed, and I go to look up the speed legend in the user manual and notice that it says you can't put the router under load at reduced speeds. What the heck? I can't even think of a use for a slower speed that doesn't put the router under load. I guess a variable speed on this trim router is kind of useless. So I bit the bullet and pulled my only full size router out of the router table and installed a 2 inch surfacing bit for my next project. The router tray sits about two and a quarter inches high and for a lot of projects that'd be a good height but for this next project the slab is starting thickness of just over two inches so I need to lift the rails up a little bit with some strips of plywood. I got these end stops which are kind of cool so you don't run the router off the end of the rails or you could just use a clamp. The router sled works great. It's super easy to use and it's really precise. The dust collection in my shop is powered only by a shop vac and a 5 gallon chip bucket and this amount of volume would overwhelm it. Someday when I get a real dust collection system in my shop then I'll get it hooked up to the router sled. The sled is really easy to disassemble and store. I leave the entire cross member assembly intact and just slide out the side rails. Now with just three pieces it's easy to stand in a corner somewhere until I need it again. Thanks so much for watching.